a love that we're streaming live. Yeah, I don't sing. Good morning, good morning, good morning. How are you, my friend? How are you, my friend? Dude, today, wow, that mic seems a little loud. <laughs> my popping in y'all's space this morning. You're like, dang, Glenn Lundy gang banging on bacon. Let's go. Hey, today is Friday. That's right. Today is Friday, January 7th, 2020. Oh, I almost said 21. I almost said 21, 2022, and what's crazy is today is the very first and the very last time it'll, oh, yeah, I, you can hear nothing, <laughs> okay, you guys can't hear anything in Clubhouse all of a sudden, okay, okay, okay. What is going on? But just my voice now. Oh no. What about the music? Can you hear that music? Wake up, wake up, wake up, wake up. Stay well, stay well, stay well, stay well. Hashtag rising grind. Okay, so you could you guys could hear that music right there in Clubhouse? Okay, and now you can hear my voice in Clubhouse? Okay, good. <laughs> okay, 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 okay. Somebody's flashing. Okay, 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 got it, got it, got it, got it, got it, got it, got it. Thank you guys so much. See, this is what I need sometimes. I just need just need a little help. That's all. Just need a little help. Dude, today is Friday, January 7th, 2022. And what's crazy is today is the very first and the very last time it'll ever be Friday, January 7th, 2022. So I want to make sure we make the absolute most. And I do mean the absolute most of this absolutely incredible, incredible day. Hey, here in Kentucky, we had quite the snowstorm yesterday. We haven't seen a snowstorm like this in the Lexington area in uh, an incredibly long time. I can't even I can't even necessarily I can't even necessarily tell you how long it's been. Um, since we had a big old snowstorm, but it snowed like crazy yesterday. And I've got to tell you, they don't play out here in Kentucky when it snows. Like they do not play out here. I mean, they shut down the entire interstate. They shut down every single exit. They shut down like all the roads. They canceled school on Wednesday afternoon. They canceled school for Thursday and Friday <laughs> right? Because they said it looks like it might snow. So they canceled everything. And I could probably understand why they don't play out here. I mean, here's a couple pictures for those that are watching on Facebook or LinkedIn or over on YouTube. So glad you're here with us this morning. Here's a couple of pictures of what that looked like. They had a 75 car pile up on the interstate right outside of Lexington here. There was cars all over the side of the road everywhere. People just uh, have a little bit of a tough time, no doubt. Now, luckily, I don't. doesn't seem like there's very many injuries, right? But we had these car pileups. So I think it's, I, I, I guess I will give validity to the reason they take it so seriously out here, right? Now, meanwhile, in Arizona, where I'm from, in Flagstaff, Arizona, they also had a big snowstorm, and this is what they reported on the snowstorm. It says, snow play in Flagstaff leads to headaches, towed cars, and lots of tickets. And this is really the only article I could find on the snow. It talks about Flagstaff and its surrounding hills are great places to go snowing and sledding. The only problem is people are, prop are parking on private property, <laughs> right? So tremendous difference in response to the snow. Tremendous difference. And I think it's really funny because really it just comes down to preparation. You see, in Flagstaff, it snows six months out of the year and averages roughly 102 inches a year of snowfall, whereas Lexington, Kentucky averages about 12 inches a year of snowfall. So because of that, Flagstaff, Arizona has to 
Um, like all the preparation is there, right? Like they have to put snow chains on their cars. They have this volcanic cinder rock they put down on the roads. Everybody's got scrapers and shovels for their driveways. Like everyone is prepared out of necessity. Whereas here in Kentucky, I personally, I don't even own a shovel out here. <laughs> I really, truly don't. I realized it yesterday. I was like, I don't even own a shovel. Whereas I spent 20 years shoveling driveways every single summer, right? So everyone is prepared out of necessity here or out there, but they're not here in Kentucky. And so you might be saying, well, Glenn, well, how does that play into our Friday? Well, here we are. We are in January, right? We are in January, January 7th. January is a month of new beginnings. January is a month filled with a clean slate. January is filled with hopes and dreams and desires for an incredible, incredible season ahead, right? And thousands and thousands of people right now all around the world are diving in to their morning five planners. They're starting off the year that way, right? They're scribbling away in those. I know that I am writing down all the things that I'm thankful for, as well as all the goals that I intend to achieve here in 2022, right? And so we're all in this space, the space of gaining, space of achieving, space of wiping the slate and starting anew. And we're all thankful for January. And that's a great start. It really is. That's a great place for us to start. We're in gratitude. We're in a fresh season. It's a great place to start. But my question for you is, do you also have chains? Do you also have some volc volcanic rock? And do you own a shovel? We're going to dive into what that looks like here in just a second. Before we do, though, you know what we got to do on this show. You know we got to do some dancing on this show. That's right. <laughs> For those of you that know, and those of you that don't know, this is the part of the show where I need you to hit that share button. That's right. I need you to hit that share button because I believe if we can change the way people start their day, it'll make a massive impact on this planet. I truly believe that. And sometimes all it takes to change the way somebody starts their day is for you to hit that share button. So if you're over on YouTube, share it out. If you're on LinkedIn, I'd love a share right now. If you're over on Facebook, you know what to do. Hit that share button. And of course, over on Clubhouse, hit that plus sign in the bottom right-hand corner of your screen and invite your friends to come join us right here for some motivation, some education, and some inspiration. Now, this is also the part of the show where I want to say good morning to you, and I want you to say good morning to me. Whether you're watching live or you're watching on replay, say what's up, and I'll say what's up back. Fair enough? Fair enough. How you doing, Angela Heath? Glad you're here. What's up, Kim Fair? JT Palmer in the building. Marcus Ellis. Travis Flaherty. What up, Travis? Gloria's up in here. Don Sankey, my man. Beverly Richardson. We've got Ramon Ray in the building. Carrie Lynn Carter. Thank you for your message yesterday. We got River Scott. We got got Vicki Everett in the building. Rich Pentrick is up in here. Kimberly Williams, Stacey Williams, Mariana Thomas, Tom Popelka. What's up, Beverly Richardson? Jeremy Nolan, my dude, in the building. That's what's up. I'm glad you're here. What's up, Mike Higdon, Kelly Edgar? We've got Natasha Smith, Tracy Hill, Oriomi. Is that right? Did I say that right? I think I might have got it right. Oriomi. We've got Devin Rodriguez in the building. Siga Jane. Where's all the LinkedIn folks? I saw a couple LinkedIn folks. I want to make sure I see all the LinkedIn info and if you're watching on youtube hook me up i want to know that you're here as well what's up liza myers borchis great to see you this morning how you doing april johnson over there on linkedin alfred smith the third my cousin what's up al great to see you this morning terrence elmore is here sean smash is here nathaniel banks james boardwine we've got ruchel lee ruchel lacy gilbert in the building gabe's up in here jamesia's up in here renee nor the beautiful queen renee nor is up in here this morning lolita e walker y'all will see more of her here in just a little bit what's up sean hayes my dude in the building this morning that's what i'm talking about we got a packed house here on hashtag rising grind 
mind. And I got to tell you, I'm super glad that you are here. And I hope that you have been diving in. If you've got your Morning 5 planner, I hope you've been diving in to our Morning 5 challenge that we got going on this month. We're using the hashtag Morning 5 Friends and connecting with other people that are using the planner all around the world. So make sure you're using that hashtag. Make sure you're making those posts. I want to see your face. I want to get to know you. I want to make sure that we're connected. As a matter of fact, one of your Morning 5 friends is Ricole Jackson. Ricole Jackson had a quote in the planner today that said, Be a voice, not an echo. Be a voice, not an echo. I love that, Ricole. Thank you so much for sharing that. And then also, those of you that are a part of the Morning 5 Planner tribe that are out there working on that, make sure you're reading that book, man. We're reading Green Lights, which is rated R, by the way. We're reading Green Lights or Miracle Mentality, but with uh, Tim Story, right? Green Lights or Miracle Mentality with Tim Story. Make sure you're diving into your book. Make sure you're sharing those takeaways uh, from those particular books. That's how we're going to stay connected here in January, right? We're networking. We're making new friends. We're creating new relationships, right? You feel me, Amy? You get it. You feel me, Lynn? Okay, Lynn gets it. What's up, Lisa? How you doing? Ray Hatcher. Glad you're here this morning as well, all right? Speaking of Green Lights, that particular book, there's a quote in there that's really powerful, that Matthew McConaughey said, listen, we all have scars. We gonna have more. Rather than struggle against time and waste it, let's dance with time and redeem it. Because we don't live longer when we try not to die. We live longer when we're too busy living. <laughs> Powerful quote by Matthew McConaughey in that book, Green Lights. Another powerful quote that I want to share with you this morning. This one comes from a guy named Benjamin Franklin. You might have heard of him. Benjamin Franklin says this. He says, if you fail to plan, you're planning to fail. There's also a guy named Winston Churchill that once said, plans are of little importance. But planning is essential. Then there was a guy named Dale Carnegie. If you haven't heard of him, look him up. He's the godfather of self-development. And he said, an hour of planning can save you 10 hours of doing. You know, it's interesting as I think about those things, there was a season a little while back, I guess this was four years ago or so, five, I guess it's been five years ago. I was working over at the uh, dealership and the owner of the dealership said, guess what? I just got invited to go to this party out here at this horse farm in Paris, Kentucky. Uh, there's this guy that just moved into town. He bought the horse farm and he wants to invite all the business owners out so that we can network and so that we can connect and so we can get to know him. I said, okay, great. That sounds, that sounds, that sounds awesome. What's the guy's name? He said, well, the guy's name is Tom Benson. I said, Tom Benson, like the Tom Benson. He said, yeah, Tom Benson, owner of the new Orleans saints. Tom Benson, longtime automotive guy with multiple dealerships all over New Orleans. Tom Benson, guy who owns banks and has his name up there on a big old skyscraper in downtown New Orleans. Like that Tom Benson had bought a horse farm in Paris. And, and, and he said, we've been invited. We're going to go. We're going to go have dinner with him and a bunch of other business owners in the area, about a hundred other business owners. And I was like, what? Okay. This is going to be dope, right? It's not every day you get to meet a guy who's made an impact like that. And so I went home and immediately I started reading. I started uh, reading about Tom Benson. I, I started understanding his life story. I started doing all kinds of research. Uh, one of the things that I found is that he always wears uh, yeah, uh, gold ties, right? Because he's for the New Orleans Saints. He always wears gold ties. I learned about his uh, his his stepkids as well as his his kids and his divorces and some of the relational things that he had going on there. I learned about why he was so passionate about building his own banks 
so that he could serve people in his uh, in the auto industry that other banks wouldn't give loans to. I learned about why he bought the New Orleans Saints so that he could save the city because he ultimately felt like if they took that team away from there, it would destroy the entire state. And so I read up about him, right? Read up everything I could. I researched as much as humanly possible about Tom Benson. And then I went out and I bought a tie. I went out and bought a golden hex tie, which I knew that no one had ever given this dude a hex tie. He had gold ties, but he didn't have a hex tie. If you don't know what that is, go look it up. If you're listening on Clubhouse, you can join us over on Facebook or LinkedIn or YouTube. There's a picture of a golden hex tie on the screen right now. I wear these sometimes. I love them. So I went out and I bought him a golden hex hex tie right and then i decided that once we were at this event that i wasn't there to network with the other business owners that i wasn't there to party and drink and throw back that i was ultimately going to get in proximity of mr tom benson and so when we got there there's all these people there and they've got him kind of blocked off he's in the back there's a gated there's a fence around the deck not a fence but you know what i mean there's a porch a back porch back deck whatever you want to call it and there's wooden railing on the thing and he's tucked in the corner his wife mrs benson is in between basically all of the people and him right and people are coming by and they're saying what's up and so on and so forth but i noticed there was space on the other side of him now i was gonna have to jump over the wood on the deck to get into that space but i realized there was a seat there and here we were at this man's house and i wanted to get into proximity of this man so that i could pick his brain learn from him all of those things because you don't get these opportunities every single day so i told josh who i was with look dude i'm going up there to sit next to mr he was like all right bro take action and so i took action jumped over the railing sat with mr tom benson and i did the most powerful thing that you can ever do when you get a chance to network or meet with somebody i started to ask him questions about himself i started to not started to i made sure that i was far more interested than interesting this wasn't about me it was about mr tom benson so i sat with mr benson for a little while we talked cars we talked all the things that i had researched we had context that we could talk about and after a while i said okay mr benson I, I'm, I'm gonna step away josh had come over his wife had come over i said we're gonna step away let, uh, let let you engage with other people there's other people here and so we stepped away and about 20 minutes later one of his staff came up and said mr benson would like you to join him at his table for dinner so then we sat at the table for dinner and we conversated and we were more interested than interesting. We asked him questions about all the things we knew he cared about, which wasn't football, which was on the surface, but more about the auto industry, his kids, the things that really mattered to him. Come the end of the night, everybody was leaving. Mr. Tom Benson said, no, you guys, please don't leave. Hang out with me a little bit. I want to show you something. No one else at this point had been allowed into the house. We all stayed outside. And so everyone left and as everybody left, he took us downstairs and he showed us all his trophies and he showed us his, his whole setup down in the basement. He showed us his man cave. And then he said something I'd, I'll never forget. He said, you know what? You guys should come watch a game with me at the Mercedes stadium in my box. Fast forward and we did. I got to watch a game, Mr. Tom Benson, his final year here on earth. I got to watch a game with him in his owner's box, me and Josh Cummins as well. And I share this story with you because I want you to understand something as we're here in January, as we're ready for the kickoff, if we, as we have our goals and dreams and hopes and desires. I want you to understand that there are people between you and every dream that you hope to achieve. Having a plan on how you're going to connect with those people is going to be crucial. You see, for me, I follow a system. The system is simple. I read anything that I can about the people that I want to connect with. I research as much as possible about the things that matter to them. I serve them in a way that is uniquely important. That resonates with them. I serve them in any way that I can to support what they have going on. I get in proximity at all costs. No matter what it takes, proximity matters. And then I take immediate 
action. And I ask a lot of questions. You see, that is my shovel. That is my volcanic rock. That is my chains on my car. And that is how I have connected with some of the like coolest people on the planet. I mean, ultimately, that's how I'm going to get Will Smith to come join us on this show. I have a plan of how I intend to network and serve amazing superhumans all over this planet. My question for you today is do you? If you fail to plan, you're planning to fail. And I don't want that for you. Listen, stick around. We're going to talk about this all day today. We got a great, or all morning this morning. We have a great show set up for you today. Uh, Brandy Holloway is going to be joining us a little bit later, which I'm super excited about that. Uh, Deepak is going to be back playing some incredible tunes for us. Of course, we're going to see Ramon Ray and Mr. Alexander Gonzalez will be joining us a little later. And then, of course... We have your incredible, incredible hosts, Lolita E. Walker, Scott Simons, Marvin Reed, and Sarah McCord that are going to be joining us here as well. I hope you're ready for an incredible morning. Let's rise and grind. This is Breakfast with Champions, me and her breakfast club. And dude, I got to tell you, I am blown away. That's right. Hashtag rise and grind is back. The number one morning show in the world, Monday through Friday from 7 to 9 a.m. We're bringing it back, baby. Powerful guests. The only way to start your day. Rise, evolve, impact together. Hashtag rise and grind. This is Breakfast with Champions, me and Breakfast Club. Your opportunity to get a seat at the table. I mean, check it out, man. Breakfast with Champions is everywhere nowadays. That's right. We've got the podcast. We've got, we're on places like Wisdom and Fireside. We're going to Green Room. And we've got YouTube and Facebook and Instagram and LinkedIn. Wherever you can join us, we would love for you to come get a seat at the table. Become the champion you know you are inside with Breakfast with champions that's right that's right that's right lolita marvin sarah scott what up how are you this morning good morning good morning good morning doing well today how are you <laughs> over the top over the top scott you're a master at this talk to us about this networking thing networking's everything glenn good morning everybody good morning breakfast with champions networking is the reason why I'm here is I connect with people. Uh, first of all, I research people that I want to connect with. And then I envision connecting with those people and then what it would take to get in their circle. You, you spelled it out perfectly, perfectly. Research the person, find out what's unique about them, serve proximity. I mean, you just gave the blueprint. Also listen, you know, we hear Ed Milet talking about how someone was on a, a jet with him flying across country. And instead of having an opportunity to ask Ed Milet questions, the person spoke the whole time. And when they flew across country, he was there to connect with Ed and Ed just said, Hey, I know part of your problem is you don't, you don't listen. You talk about yourself. So ask questions, be, uh, be present and listen and show you know that you're genuinely interested in what they have to say. So I envisioned being in um, Andy Frisella's network and my let's, but then I had to put in the work in order to get there. When I got there, you know, sure. Did I pay money to get in some of those circles? Absolutely. Did I serve them? Yes. Yeah, there ain't nothing wrong with that, right? However, you got to get in the proximity. That, that proximity is power. I don't care what you got to do to get in there, right? You know, it's interesting, Scott, on what you just said. Um, we had a Breakfast with Champions moderator Zoom yesterday, and uh, Alexandra Carter and Kim Walsh Phillips, who I admire so much, were speaking. And a topic came up on the point that you just raised. The question that someone had raised in the mod Zoom was, why sometimes do people speak so much instead of listen? And it was actually Alexandra who said that sometimes that's an insecurity, that they think that that impressive person needs to be impressed, needs to hear them speak, needs to hear their thoughts, need to know that they've thought of this and this and this and this and this. And this. But to the point that you just made, you'll impress 
you know, impressive people more when you listen to them or what Glenn was saying too about this idea of um, talking to them about real things, about their family, about what they care about. Um, Glenn knows I recently connected with someone like crazy famous on an airplane. And part of it was because when we had lunch together, that's what we were talking about. I showed him pictures of my kids. You know what I mean? Like before I started talking about <laughs> breakfast with champions, we were talking about like real life things. And that's how you, you build that bridge. And when she says crazy famous, she, I mean, she talking crazy famous, <laughs> crazy, crazy. I will say that they, famous. they walked, they walked on the plane in a full length, um, Versace fur coat. And I was like, I think this person's famous. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no doubt. No doubt about it. No doubt about it. It's awesome. You know but, what? Yeah. Go ahead. I yeah, I absolutely love that because sometimes you don't need to know who a person is to connect with them. And sometimes those are the best relationships when you don't know who a person is or their status, when you can see beyond that. Sometimes you don't even see it. And one thing I love that Glenn and Scott talked about just now was you know, be interested in the person. Why do you want to connect? Sometimes it's not all about the end game of what you think the end game is. Just be a person in that moment. And that's the real connection. So that was a great story, Glenn. Thanks so much. <laughs> oh, well, thank you. I appreciate you, Lolita. And yeah, it's super important. Where's my shot? Hold on. There it is. Sorry. Um, you know, super important that we keep in mind that people are people, man. People are people. I don't care what level you get at. People are people. And it's so important that we never lose sight of that, right? That you never lose sight. It doesn't matter what they've done, where they've gone or whatever. You know, people are people. Recently reading, um, uh, at last, 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 the last few weeks, recently reading, you know, Will Smith's book, he talks about, you know, he was like one of the biggest celebrities in the world starting at like age 23. But here he is at 50 years old and he's like, I'm still scared of the water. Like, like he's just people, right? People are people, and the more fascinating we, can, the more fascinated we can be in them, the more fascinating we become. I think that that's such a a powerful lesson that we can all learn. Absolutely, there's a, it's almost like a double um, from approach, approach for me because maybe I just. It's because of the whole random conversation. I'm Marvin, I'm having um, matrix. I'm having matrix issues. Are you guys... um, hopefully, hopefully you can hear me. Can you hear me okay? Still in I the matrix. Well. It's going it's going out on the feed, the matrix style. <laughs> okay, well, look, I'm going to keep it going anyway. Hopefully you can hear what I'm saying. What I was going to say was in respect to um, your brand and how you carry yourself, um, as much as it definitely is about um, sort of, you know, going out there and, and, and connecting with people, I always think brand is so, so important as well. And I'm always trying to um, adhere to a quote yeah. really, really like um, time decides who you meet in the life and your heart decides who you want in life. You decide to stay in your life. People, people will always stay towards you if you uh, if you kind of take that into consideration. Marvin, I love what you're saying about um, how you always come from the perspective of branding. Because one thing I thought when Glenn was speaking earlier is that actually it's kind of an incredible and yet everyone has hit on important juxtaposition to have the humanity side by side with the planning um because as always it's not just about the plan it's about how you communicate it obviously right me coming from that um communications background and so i think that what you are saying about um kind of who you keep in your life and thinking about it from that perspective i think is super powerful so i just wanted to sum that up in case anyone on clubhouse was having trouble with the sound mm -hmm. You can feel energy. And when you come from a place of wanting something, nobody wants that. Just think about when people come up to you. I just want to <laughs> chill. I just want to talk. Get to know me first. So absolutely. I love this conversation. All about well, Lisa, buy me dinner first. That's what she said. <laughs> <laughs> yes, 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 indeed. Scott, you are a uh, you've you've really mastered this, man. You've got you've got pretty powerful network and th that's led to a lot of you building personal relationships has lot led to a lot of business relationships, which those business relationships have led to opportunities for you to ultimately serve. That's one of the things I love about you is you you build it up so that you can give back. And I think that knowing your intention and purpose and your why 
before at the start does that maybe help drive is that why you're flying around the country and and making all these connections is that a big part of that yeah i mean i, I think some people sit and think well i i, I don't have a brand well you, your name is your brand so i try to put positivity out so that way that i'm received well and i just try to be a very positive person um so to the point that you're talking about I love talking about the auto industry, but I also like talking about my family and my interests and other things that I'm involved in. So my my primary is the auto industry, but when I go and when I'm about to walk into this room full of entrepreneurs, there'll be about 175 of them. Uh, there's about 25 new members. I've researched some of those members to see what they've accomplished you know, to see, to see about their family. That way, when I engage them, and there's some people I'm going to seek out just to shake their hand, welcome them, and, you know, I, and connect with them. And these connections that I have, I don't even anticipate or expect anything out of the connections. You know, I build a relationship with them. I don't spam them. I don't go on Facebook and say, or any of the socials and say, hey, call me right now. You know, I need to sell one more car. No, I don't. I just say, hey, look, if there's anything that you need automotive wise, I'm here to help you. Yesterday, I helped someone purchase a BMW X5M. I didn't sell him the vehicle. I just helped him purchase one from somebody else. And he said, man, I really appreciate you doing that. I know how busy you are, but no, I serve that individual. Now, I know without expecting anything, that individual will send business back to me because I serve them. But I think a lot of times um, people want the end result and don't put in the work to build the relationships. And I genuinely care about people. I genuinely care about the connections that I have and I show up me. I don't try to walk in this room here shortly and be anybody else but me. But I also ask a lot of questions about them. And I've done research on the people that are in the room. So yeah, I'm really fortunate, Glenn. I mean, I, the great connections I have here on Clubhouse, the great connections I have across the groups that I'm in, I'm extremely fortunate to have the connections that I have. And I'm gonna do some business deals. I did two business deals yesterday. You know, I said, hey, <laughs> you have to do business, let's do business. I love so, it, babe. You know, yeah, that's just making connections and, and showing up authentically me, which that's is what it. I'm about ready to do. That's it, man. Our boy GC, he talks about that, right? He's like, you want to get close to me? Do a deal with me. Let's do a deal. I, I don't care if it's a big deal, a small deal, whatever. Like, let's do a deal and we, we can start there. Glenn, I do deals to build relationships. So there's a couple of deals I'll do with this individual. And I'll say, hey, I'm going to do this deal with you. But keep me in mind for the bigger deals where just instead of a syndication, it could just be me or you. But yeah, you know, pay for that course. Sign up for that person. You know, don't don't expect something for free. Support them. Support the people that you want in their proximity, and they'll support you. And that makes me think, for example, of like Scott, our champion circle right now, um, which we have the people do every Monday night. You're literally in the room speaking one to one, as you said, with David Spizak, with Marvin, with Glenn, with Brian Benstock, with Kim Walsh Phillips, with all of these people who individual coaching would be inaccessible or bananas. And they make that investment and they can build that relationship with them one-on-one -on -one every week. It's just, I think you make a really brilliant and important point, not only for people to grow their networks, but grow their business, grow their potential and their entrepreneurship, 100%. Amen, 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 amen. Hey, work on that network, folks. It's so incredibly important. You go out, you meet, you connect. And every once in a while you'll run into, as you're working on the network, every once in a while you'll run into like amazing superhumans with incredible gifts that just move your spirit. And the guy that I'm about to introduce you to, a guy by the name of T Deepak, does just that. There's something about his music that truly, truly, truly moves the spirit. So excited to introduce you to the one and only Deepak. Right now If I could open up my mind Right now I'd fly my thoughts right through your head And I don't know Where they come from If you could see Inside of me All my life This feeling 
takes me all my life It's always been like this all my life These things I can't control Deepak, my man, how are you, sir? Oh no, I can't hear you again. It makes me so sad. <laughs> Hold on, wait, try it now. How about yes. now? You got me now? Yes, I can hear you. I can hear you. I can hear you. All right, sweet. I'm, I'm working. I'm using the computer audio for now, but I'm setting up this crazy OBS for later, which will be epic. Dude, you are epic, man. I swear, every time... Like, what is that crawling around behind you? I just saw something move behind you. What was that? It's probably one of my cats. I'm a cat guy. I got two beautiful cats, and uh, they're probably exploring the, the space. <laughs> Deepak, man, how long have you been making music like this, brother? Since I was a kid, but, you know, in terms of producing and all that kind of this, like ten, about 10, 12 years, I was doing it, you know, I was doing, went to school for pre-med and pre-law, but while I was there, on all, all, all I did every night was get on my computer and just make beats, you know? I was like, couldn't wait to finish graduating, just to make my parents happy and then get out of here and go to California and be a musician, but, you know, I finished my pre-med, pre-law anyway to... <laughs> right you had to make them happy well brother man like you just embody like your music it's it's incredible like it embodies a certain aspect of our soul of our spirit right whoa no problem i got it right here and, and, and sarah everybody heard that that right there also <laughs> Okay, good, 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 good. Sorry about that. I was just muted on my mic over there for Clubhouse Depop. All right, so my man, 
your music when you're like getting into the zone to write these things or to perform like is there any like what is what does preparation look like right we're talking about if you if you fail to plan you're planning to fail and i know your preparation i've seen some of it because we got to see live at grow for god but walk us through yeah. like if you're probably different if you're going to write a song than to perform a song but talk to us a little bit about what the preparation takes to be able to put on uh, an experience like what you just did yeah i mean in terms of yeah like you actually broke it down perfectly the difference between writing mode versus performing mode performing mode is like a lot different it's a lot of tech and getting the gear set up right like we're doing even here um and then it's also just you know in being in the vision like pretend you know just closing my eyes a lot, a lot of it's meditation and i think that's where writing and performing are similar it's like really meditating and closing my eyes and visualizing what you know i'm trying to say what i'm offering to the world and what the song will sound like of the future it's like you're just kind of living into the future in your mind and seeing it seeing the crowd seeing coachella seeing the hollywood bowl and then from there everything kind of works backwards to now like okay what does that take now that's going to be Oh, I need to have this instrument. I need to have this chorus that everyone's going to sing back to me. It's got to be a sing along. I want I want the songs to really be not about me performing, but about everyone singing together. That's sort of my my thing, and everyone's different. I'm really into like I want everyone to be like all my life. I want I want everyone to sing that with me. You know, I don't want to just be up there by myself. You know, it's a shared experience. I'm sort of envisioning that, and then and then I'm just here, just you know, grinding and playing, and you know, recording myself, you know, on video or audio, listening to myself and seeing like you know, which parts need to be, you know, more in tune or more in time or more, more feel based. A lot yeah. of feel, music is all about emotion, you know? And you can see that, like when you're dancing and performing, I can tell that you're, the, 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 the experience is not just a, and it's not just one that we listen to. And I think that's the difference between maybe you and, and some other artists that I've seen that are great singers, or maybe there's some artists that are great performers, but you've been able to really, like, I see your music. I feel your music. I also hear your music, right? Mm -hmm. And that's, uh, it, it, it's such a unique treat, man. I absolutely love it every time we get to spend time together. No, I appreciate it, man. I had a, I mean, I had a great time in Kentucky with y'all, and uh, you know, let's let's do let's do a whole world tour, everybody. <laughs> yeah, I think we need to absolutely do that. And uh, Deepak, will you do me a favor? Will you hang out and 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 do another song for us, maybe here in just a little bit? You think you could do that for us? Yep, I'll be here, and I'm uh, in the process of doing some technical preparation that like we talked about, getting this whole new OBS set up. So hopefully, I'll be able to even do you guys a proper thing with the violin and guitar if not we got another song queued up either way i'll have it i'll have it i'm working on all that so that sounds awesome my man i appreciate you so much ladies and gentlemen this is my man deepak he'll be back here in just a little bit for another song so make sure you stay tuned for that and what i'm gonna do right now is i'm gonna go ahead and uh you know there's a lot of things going on out there in the world and some of it's good and some of it's great and so what we're gonna do is i'm gonna have my man ramon ray bring us some of that good news this morning Good morning, good morning, good morning. Welcome everybody to Good News with Rise and Grind with Glenn Lundy. I hope you have your cup of coffee, your favorite beverage, cause I do. So welcome, we're glad to have you with us today as we begin our good news. And that first segment was fire, was amazing. Invest in others because they are accessible to you. Thank you, Glenn Lundy and host for that Deepak. What great music. He said he wants people to sing with him. Oh, my life. That was bad, but what a great segment it was indeed <laughs> today. <laughs> what can I say, Glenn? I'm trying, man. I'm trying. <laughs> I can't sing either, man. I'm with you. <laughs> today, we have three good news nuggets and one little bonus. How to reduce stress by focusing more. A 23-year-old 23 23-year-old woman graduates college with her 88-year-old grandfather. I kid you not. And there's a new book out which will help you seven minute productivity solution. And we'll talk about our bonus. Our goal here is to always do three things. We want to make you a bit smarter. We want to make you laugh. Or you know what? We'll still succeed if we just warm your heart. And we, if we do all three, we've won. You can get to know me better at RamonRay.com or on IG at Ramon Ray Smart Hustle. So with that, let's dive into today's good news. And when you hear this sound, ding, 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 you know it's time for good news. So 
Number one, how to reduce stress by focusing more. Oftentimes when we're stressed, when we're hurting, how does the average person cope? And I'm an average person. We stress, we do that sometimes by distracting ourselves. We don't want to think about it. But a new author of a new program, John Cabot Zinn, the founder of Mindfulness Based Stress Reduction, he says instead, maybe we should focus more on that to give more attention to it. And Kabat Zinn believes that we should cultivate awareness and well being and living in the moment in our day to day life. And one definition I want to bring to you is we talk about good news. What is mindfulness? It's the awareness that arises from paying attention on purpose in the present moment, non judgmentally. That was from our friends at NPR. And again, you can just DM me on IG good news to get links to all these resources and all this good news. This was pretty interesting. A 23 year old woman graduates college with her 88 year old grandfather. 23 year old Melanie Salazar celebrated an extra special graduation from the University of Texas at San Antonio with her classmate, her 88 year old grandfather, Renee Nira. So congratulations to them. I recall a Glenn and host I know myself. I got my college degree only as an adult. Now, I didn't get to get my college degree with my grandfather, but I think that's pretty cool that a youngin like Melanie can get her degree with her 88 year old grandfather. It shows clearly they both have the hustle of education in them as well. And it says here they didn't take classes together in some part of their academic journey, but they did eat lunch and they did study together. And it looks like they did graduate together. Our third good news segment of the day, and I hope you're enjoying these good news segments. We definitely want to see your comments, pour into the comments, share with us how you're liking them. Give us your feedback so Alexander Gonzalez can see them and see your feedback and our hosts as well. The seven minute productivity solution how to manage your schedule, overcome distraction, and achieve the results you want. Didn't Scott Simon just talk about that today? Didn't Sarah McCord talk about how she was a baller on the airplane connecting to people? Well, maybe they read the seven minute productivity solution. This is by productivity expert, John Brandon, a relatively new book that came out just this year in January called The Seven Minute Productivity Solution. He shares his best ways to do what? Refresh your routine and increase your productivity. And I know that Marvin and Lolita are all about that. And here's a few tips I've learned from reading the Morning Five Planner. Limit social notifications. Not, 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 not now. We don't grab the phone the first thing. Wake up early. Glenn Lundy, Glenn Lundy knows about waking up early. Journaling and time blocking. Last thing I'll say, Glenn, before I hand it off to you, a little bonus, some of you may know that January is the month when old BlackBerry devices are nixed and they stop working. So those of you who still have your old Blackberries and are wondering why are they not working? Well, now you know. Again, I'm Ramon Ray. DM me good news on IG to get links to all these resources. And Glenn Lundy, my brother, back to you. No, 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 no. You ain't allowed to go nowhere, Ramon. <laughs> we got to put you in the hot seat. Everybody wants to learn or, or, or to drill you a little bit more on some of these things. And so Ramon, Sarah, Marvin, Lolita, Scott Simons, y'all get him. Get him. Let's go. Uh oh, Sarah. Oh, no, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. I hear you good, Sarah. Go ahead. Yeah, you're fine. Go ahead. It's my fault. Make that happen every day. Um, I was gonna say I love all of your stories, but it's fascinating to me in the third one, as you were kind of ranking down those productivity tips and you were saying, well, we all know this because we listen to Glenn say it every morning, that you know, when you talk about tried and true, when you talk about successful people, mm -hmm. I love the fact of knowing that it's not guesswork. It's not an experiment. We know that everywhere you're going to see commonalities across the habits of successful people. So any aspiring champions who want to level up, listening to good news this morning, getting their morning five planner, it's proven. Like how many things in life is it like, listen, it's proven if you wake up earlier, it's proven if you do this, it's proven if you do this, you're going to have a more successful year. And I always find that so heartening that like you can't mess it up because everyone who's successful does it. I love that. That's right. It's built with purpose, Sarah, built with purpose. Who's going to fire something else at me? <laughs> well, I want to talk about these Blackberries because I remember having a Blackberry and I'm thinking, are they still working? I had no clue. Ramon, you come with the greatest tips. Listen, one of the things, let's talk productivity and Blackberry. Do you remember 
remember having a time block because you were on your BlackBerry all of the time. Yes. Yes. I, like I loved my BlackBerry, but at least they're not going to set it on fire like they did with the Samsungs that they wanted people to get rid of. Remember how they set them to explode if people wouldn't turn them in? So at yes. least just turning off is a step in the right direction. And Alita, follow-up question for you, Alita. Do you remember when the Blackberries and even pages and things were status symbols? It's like now everybody has it, but there was a trajectory, right, Lolita, where when you got your first BlackBerry, you know, if you, you know, if you understand what I'm saying, it was like, ooh, you're legit, right? Ramon, did you have... Did you have a razor? Is what I want to know. Did you have I, a Motorola no, razor? No, I didn't. But I had the Palm Pilot. I had the handspring visor. I had the Casio Boss. I had the Casio Smartwatch. I know y'all are a little bit older than I am because I'll say in my age set, when you got the razor, that, yes. was, that was a moment before the Blackberry. And Marvin, just so you know, for me, Marvin, yeah, I Marvin. see your beautiful smile, but it's coming out choppy there. I see your smile, but I think in UK, since y'all didn't get snow, I think there's a there's some <laughs> anger with the weather people. I think. <laughs> yeah, we're getting. We're, we're, yeah, Marvin, Marvin, you're you're straight over. No, don't go nowhere yet, Ramon. Um, but Marvin, yeah, you're you're straight over there in the uh, in 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 the matrix, Marvin. But Ramon, as you were talking about the uh, the eighty year old graduating, it made me. It, I don't know. I don't know why, but for some reason, I thought of this guy that I know that's got like eight kids, and his and his 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 uh, his youngest is one year old, and he's forty three. I was like. Dang, when mine's graduating high school, I'll be 63, 64 years old, something like that. <laughs> that's funny, Glenn. And what a blessing that's going to be, right? That whole age range of you as a father through there. So you're right, Glenn. But me getting my college degree when I was an adult wasn't quite when I was 80, but it was an interesting feeling because I remember being in night class and other things with some younger people, you know, and I see your laugh there, Scott Simons as well. <laughs> What was the movie where Rodney Dangerfield went back to school? Was it called Back to School? It was called was Back it? to School. It was a that classic. That was an epic, back to movie, epic movie. Ramon, let me ask you a question. You show up with such great energy. Everybody looks forward to seeing you come on. I don't know if that's a bad reflection on me or just a really great reflection on you. <laughs> <laughs> when you come on. Where do you come up with this stuff? Where do you come up with what you go over? Now, don't give a cheat code if there's like uh one website you go to, but... How do you come right. up with this stuff? You know what it is, Scott, and I think you know the answer. It's funny that every time you're, if you never heard of a Ford TRX, I think, right? That's one thing you specialize in. But when you first get one, you see everybody has one. So the moment that Glenn Lundy and team were like, Ramon, can you host good news? I started looking all over for it and my eyes were open. And I'll tell you, Scott, no, no, no hiding it at all. I built a small team to help me curate as well. So shout out to TC and shout out to Sharon on my team who are like curators of the Rise and Grind Good News Show who helped me with it. That's the secret right there, too. <laughs> Ask for help when you need it. Show That's up right. with your team. I love it. Delegate and disappear. Absolutely. <laughs> and that's the secret, too. Shout them out. Give them that. Let them know what, that their work is appreciated. I love that, Ramon. I love Absolutely. That. Now, they work very hard. And it's, it's a good team. You know, we put it move on to some other things here. So thank you, Glenn Lundy, for having me here, brother. And I will see y'all in the bonus section happening soon, right? So thank you. Reload, you are awesome. That's what I'm talking about. Delicate and disappear, she said. Delicate, delegate and disappear. I love that, Lolita. All right, hey, ladies and gentlemen, I have a dear friend of mine uh, that I've gotten to know over the uh, last year, really, that is going to be joining us here uh, in, just, in just a second. Her name is the great Brandy Holloway and Brandy is a spectacular human in many ways. Uh, she is the CEO. She is a CEO and a founder. She spent 17 years in the fitness and wellness industry. She knew her mission was to help solopreneurs and business professionals own their fire and life and business. Social media, personal branding and networking were the keys to her success. So she wanted to help others create a way to or to create a way to create an inferno of success in their brand their business and their network and so super excited to bring brandy holloway in today's spotlight and that is powerful powerful valuable stuff brandy what are you doing girl how are you hello hello <laughs> hello 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 how have you been 
Wonderful. Actually, I, I feel like things are getting back to normal. Well, actually, I, I should say not. I, I'm about to have virtual school again with kiddos, but that's okay. I just get more time with them. A virtual school with the kiddos. How many kiddos we got? Two, nine and 13. Nine and 13. So you guys are going back to virtual. Did a little virtual before. This is round two. Uh, you know, I know it takes a it takes a special amount of love and patience and tenderness to be a uh, homeschooling mama of two, right? It's, uh, you got to have some special gifts, don't you? Yeah, it does. But, you know, the whole point of me creating the business um, that I have now was because I've, I've been a single mom since they were really, really young and I wanted to be able to be with them and run a business. And so now I, I can do that from anywhere. Yeah, now you can do that from anywhere at all. So let's talk about that a little bit. Uh, you know, a lot of times the challenges that come with being a single mom and then the idea of an entrepreneur is super scary, right? Like, hey, I probably need to just hold on to my job and I know at least I'm making my my, my, my $22 an hour. I know that it's I can count on it. I got a kid that's relying on me or two kids that are relying on me. So talk to me about maybe a little bit about your journey. How were you able to step into the world of not only step into the world of entrepreneurship, but dominate in the world of entrepreneurship while raising those two kiddos? So interestingly enough, I, um, as, as you mentioned, I was in the fitness and wellness industry and I love that, but I was ever really going to be able to have the quality time I wanted with my children. Um, I went through an unfortunate series of events like some of us do. Um, and when my daughter was an infant, my son was three, I found myself in a really bad place. Um, we ended up, I ended up losing everything financially, evicted from my home, moved back with my parents, um, just all the bad things. And I'd had a business, I'd had a business at the time. So I just, I lost literally everything. And I kind of checked out actually for a little while. Um, and in that process, this is where the Phoenix factor came from because I woke up one day and I thought, yes, I can go get a job, um, which my parents were sh strongly urging me to do. But then I thought I'm never going to be with my, my kiddos. And I was raised by a single mother who was a nurse who worked 12 hour shifts and then was really tired after that. And, um, I just, I didn't want that life. So I decided to sacrifice in the beginning and build it. And um, I, I love that, you know, what, what I'm doing now. Um, and it so, became such a big vision that I'm showing my children that they can do anything they put their mind to. It's incredible watching them learn now because they're at the age, like I said, nine and 13, they're picking up on all of the things and what we're able to do because of where I am now. Um, and now I'm kind of on that mission where I'm actually gonna help young kids learn how to be an entrepreneur but also I'm gonna be able to help train single moms so they can do what I'm doing, stay home and work with me and make money and be home with their babies. So this has become an incredible experience for me. I love that. I absolutely love that. Now talk to me, you said Phoenix Factor. What, 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 what is the, what are the, you just kind of drop that in there real quick, right? Talk to me about that. What is the Phoenix Factor? I wanted a reminder um, that no matter how bad things got, because they had gotten so bad at that point, that I could always burn through it and rise up. And so I decided to name the agency, the Phoenix Factor. That makes sense, also rise up, anyone right? I, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So anyone I was working with as well, it's like you can always ignite uh, your passion and burn through your challenges and rise up. And that is the motto that we stick with all the time. Yeah, I, I, I love that. And I, lo I love the spirit of that the visual aspect to that. So when you're, when you go in to help someone get from that place, right? They're feeling a little, maybe they have a little self doubt. Maybe they're not quite sure that they can do it. Um, they got a little bit of an itch They're they, they're the motherly instinct, right? Is, is kick it in, like stay where you're at, stay where you're safe, make sure those kids are fed. Uh, when you, when you jump in, with them, what are maybe like the first one or two actions that someone who's listening today can do to start moving in that direction to they can, where they can rise like a phoenix? The very first thing um, that I would say now, and this is a very different answer than all the years before, uh, the very first thing is you need, you need to do an inventory of what you want your life to be like versus where it is. Um, you know, we kind of get bogged down in the details. Moms wear many hats and we're thinking about all the things that we must do and have to do right now. Um, but, you know, once again, with the kiddos, depending on what age they are, I am an I am a older young mother, meaning I'm 49, I'll be 50 this year and I have a nine and a 13. So I'm in a very different spot with them as well. Yeah. Um, 
but I, I, the second thing I would say, you know, do the inventory and then whatever you need to build that inventory, whatever people places, things that you need to build that inventory, go find those people and surround yourself with those people consistently until you get there, you know, so that you're not beating your head against the wall, trying to figure it out on your own. Yeah, no, no doubt. That's one of the things we've been talking about um, here today on the show of how important it is that network, right? The people that were around the and 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 I think to taking it a step further, Brandy, like being willing to ask for help, right? Like sometimes we can get around the right people, but we sit back and we think that you know we're gonna uh, be too burdensome. My wife, my wife is a, an expert at this, so I'll be like, "Honey, just call and ask." And she's like, "Well, I don't want to be a burden, you know. I don't want to bother them." I'm like, "Dude, we gotta." Ask. And I'm working on that myself too. At times, is going out there and asking. So, how important it is? Is it? Do you believe that when we're in the season that we that we ask for help and look look not just to get in the room with people, but actually to get some coaching, to get some mentorship, to be able to ask to get to that next level. Yeah, I, I know that I think some of us are, you know, kind of raised in that thinking. Um, you know, we don't ask for help. We figure it out on our own. But at the end of the day, I mean, anyone that's listening right now, we love actually, I love being asked for help. I, I think just the backup to that ask is that the person do it. Um, I'm very clear with people. I'm very direct that, you know, I will help you. I'll give you the tips and the tools and the resources and all of the things. But at the end of the day, it is you that has to take that action to do that thing. So if you don't ask, no one's going to be able to provide you with what you need. You know, whether you're asking God or you're asking the universe or you're asking another person, you have to speak it into existence what you need. You have to say it so that you're hearing it. You know, mind, body, spirit, all of those things. And that's been a huge shift for me. You need to say it because you're going to believe it. The more you say it, the more you ask, the more you get out there and put it out there. And that's kind of an imposter syndrome thing, I think, too, that people don't think they deserve to be helped. Yeah, I think... I think so, and it's just so interesting. Like humans are, we're weird creatures, right? We're we're very weird creatures. Like we know we need help, but then we won't ask for help because our little egos get in the way. But then we'll mess up, or we won't advance, and then we hit rock bottom, and then finally we're like, I need help. And it's like you could avoid that whole process if you would just go in understanding that next level experiences in your life require next level people would you agree yes right absolutely next level experiences require next level people and in order to get to those next level people at some point you're gonna have to ask ask for an invite ask to get to the table ask for advice ask for coaching ask for mentorship ask for help hey brandy hang tight just there for a second i'm going to throw you into the hot seat with the rest of the crew here on hashtag rise and grind i know you're ready but first i'm going to throw it to a quick little reminder for everybody that we're going to be meeting up over in uh, dallas here soon so remind everybody to join us in dallas and then stay tuned and we'll be back with brandy holloway and the crew This is Breakfast with Champions, the Millionaire Breakfast Club, your opportunity to get a seat at the table. That's right, and I don't know if you knew this or not, but we're going to be hanging out in Dallas, Texas. That's right, all the superstars of Breakfast with Champions in one place at one time, and we want you there. you got to go to breakfastwithchampions.live so you can join us, and I'm telling you, you never know how one event can completely transform your life. So come join us, breakfastwithchampions.live. This is Breakfast with Champions Millionaire Breakfast Club, your opportunity to get a seat at the table. And we got to tell you, we're super excited about the new Morning 5 Planner. If you've been looking for community, you've been looking to connect with like-minded and like-hearted people, people that like to rise and write their gratitudes and their goals, people that are interested in evolving into the best versions of themselves that they can possibly be, then the Morning 5 Planner is for you. That's right. You can go to themorning5planner.com and get you one today. Good morning. And I'll wait my turn. <laughs> Representing the DMV, you know, I am a super fan. I love you, Lalita. So I love you here. too. Listen, here is a question because like you, I am a single mommy, um, divorced single mommy doing a co-parenting thing, which is working out well. But one of the things you talked about was, you know, you are really honing in on working with single moms during entrepreneurship. 
one of the things I want to say is thank you. And the next question that I have for you is, what are three things you would tell a single mom today if they're ready to leap into entrepreneurship? Ooh, great question. Um, number one, uh, just because you're good at what you do will not make you great at business. So make sure that you do your research before you take that leap. Mm -hmm. um, I'm speaking from complete personal experience on that one. Um, number two, give yourself lots of grace because it's just not going to be a perfect journey, especially when you have the two kiddos or however many kiddos you have. Um, and I think the third is, is to remember to focus on the bigger picture. Don't get bogged down so much in the details. Um, allow that passion to be consistently fueled and ignited and fired up. Oh, thank you so much, Brandy. You know, one of the things that you were saying before I pass it over to Sarah, who is so excited as well to bring you all the way in another DMV fan over there, um, is another thing I'll add is surround yourself with people who are going to support you because entrepreneurship is not the easiest thing in the world. And I am so excited that you are doing that, um, especially for single moms, because it is a task and a half. And this right here, you can be that phoenix that rises and does the damn thing. So thanks, Brandy. Thank you, over girl. Here, Sarah. Thank you so much. I'm actually passing the microphone to one of the gentlemen if y'all want to duke it out before I ask my question. <laughs> I, I would love to ask a question, but only if my sound is, is coming through clearly. I can uh, hear you. I don't know if you can hear me. Oh, fantastic. Excellent. Perfect timing. I would love to ask the question. So, so I mean, I, I grew up predominantly with, with uh, my mother and, and um, I'm a huge uh, admirer of um, you know, females in the, who are entrepreneurs and super powerful at what they do. And, and, but I also have two children. So I would love to ask the question um, of how you actually, um, in terms of the relationship with your kids and actually showing them that entrepreneurship is an option and, and really uplifting them, I'd love to get um, your insight on that. Um, because I think it's really important. It's not, I don't know what it's like in the US, but definitely here in the UK, it's not something that really is, is an option and it's not taught in schools. And, and, and so, yeah, I would love to get your, your uh, uh, response to that. So I'm gonna have a really bold response to that because I'm doing something really cool with my 13 year old. Um, my nine year old, I feel like she needs to stay where she is. So I have these conversations about why I'm doing certain things and walking them through the journey because at nine, helping her understand that. But my 13 year old, we're actually going to pull him from school, um, put him in a program so he can homeschool. And he's actually going to work in my business with me at 13 and travel and do events and learn. Um, and in that process, what he has to commit to is I have him reading a book, um, 10 pages a day. So he's reading Rich Dad, Poor Dad right now. And um, just giving him that education, I know he's not going to get in school. And I was never educated in that way either. And a lot of us weren't. So I want to give him that education. I want to give him that opportunity. Fantastic. I absolutely love that. I'll pass it to, to Scott quickly so I can jump in. Hey, Brandy, I'm also uh, live in the state of Virginia. So it's awesome to see all these superpower women oh, wow. that live in Virginia. So you're on the eastern part. I'm in the mountains. Y'all are down toward the beach. I, you know, I, I like to be closer toward the, toward the beach. You need to come visit for sure. Um, tell me, what was your, you're obviously very successful, super successful, just like Lolita. What, what's your why? What, what, what gets you up every single day? What makes you tick on the days that you don't want to do what you do? I haven't had one of those days yet, to be honest with you, but I think it's because um, I don't focus on motivation. I focus on the fact that I'm able to get up every day and I have a roof over my head because I didn't have one when, when I lost that, when I lost my business. And um, my fire is fueled by helping others, by giving. You know, we all have our personal, you know, love languages and the, and the way that we like to work and our passion. So it's never about money. Um, I grew up poor, I could live with or without it. So money has never really gotten in the way. I got in my own way and I just love now that I got out of my own way. I can live every day helping other entrepreneurs do that. and. Um, I don't know, that just constantly fuels my fire. I, I just really, do I have days I'm in a bad mood or or maybe a little negative? Sure, but I've re, I've worked to reframe my mindset for so many years. I've studied it for so long. Um, and a lot of people, I mean, when I was on here before, I told my story, I, had, I went through a lot of traumatic situations as a child and um, learned how to cope and heal in all the wrong ways. So going through that process and learning how to reframe my mindset helped me not only personally, but in my professional life as well. Brandy, it's great to connect with you. And if there's anything I could do for you, you know, please reach out. But it's great to 
connect with another powerful lady in the state of Virginia. So thank you so much. Thank you. You sure we are need to have a Virginia event, you guys. <laughs> Yeah, you you sure you sure aren't lying about that, Scott. Y'all got y'all y'all got some powerful ones out there in Virginia, Brandy. Uh, I want to say thank you first of all. I am in incredibly grateful that you chose to spend time with us here this morning on hashtag Rise and Grind. But even more so, I just want to say thank you for pouring into uh, what I what I can only imagine uh, of the the women out there that have been in your shoes, been in your situation, for you to be so. Uh, vulnerable and authentic and share your story, share the struggles, share the trials so that you can help someone see, hey, if she can do it, I can too, right? And that takes a lot of courage on your part. It's a very brave thing that you do. And I know it's making a really big impact in a lot of people's lives. And so I'm just so grateful for your discipline and desire to go out there and elevate humanity. It is really, really something special. Thank you. Yeah, you're very, very, very welcome. Thanks for being with us. Brandy, what's the best way for everybody to connect with you and so that they can follow you, they can learn more about you? Do we need to go to phoenixfactor.com? Where do we need to go? Sure, the phoenixfactor.com or Brandy. I always remind everyone when you when you put my name anywhere, you can find me anywhere, but it's Brandy Holloway, not Holloway. So just remember that when you're looking me up. <laughs> I love that. Holla. All right, girl. Holla. Well, we appreciate you so much. Thanks for being here on Rise and Grind. Thank you so much. Yeah, ladies and gentlemen, I promised you that, uh, I didn't promise you, I asked live on here if Deepak would come back and do another song for us today, and he agreed, and so we're going to do that here uh, right now. Ladies and gentlemen, my friend, Deepak.
Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You, sir, are something incredibly, incredibly, incredibly special. Thank you for coming back and sharing that with us, man. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah. Deepak, I want to jump right in. That is absolutely beautiful. Every single time you come on a stage, you just take me into a place where I can just close my eyes and literally be free. Um, the other day you talked a little bit about inspiration and for those folks who weren't here, I'd love for you to talk a little bit about what brings you inspiration when you go to create. So impressive. Oh, thank you. Yeah. I mean, for me, inspiration is a lot of just getting out of getting out of my own way, you know, just kind of like letting the mind like kind of fade the thoughts, fade questions and all that, just observing them, not judging the self or anything like that, but just observing anything that could be either serving or not serving, but just kind of like breathing. And just letting it go and allowing something higher to come kind of download in you know so it's really just about listening um imagining visualizing and feeling how i can be of service you know and in sanskrit in india the word for service selfless service is seva so it's kind of in our culture to think about like how can we be in selfless service and so just being that allows you know all the ego to fade and just kind of like listen to what could be the next piece of inspiration or words or lyrics or songs or music that could possibly uh, cause some inspiration or vibration in somebody else, for example. Deepak, I'm curious how many instruments you have there and how many instruments you play. You I got play a about full, 20, you got 20 a full instruments. Thing going on. You know, we got we got a bunch of. I don't know if you can see all this. There's like a bunch of different synthesizers and keyboards, all these kind of things. We got violins, guitar, basses. Um, there's a bunch of drums and percussion. So you know, about, about, I got the sitar in the other room, some Indian instruments. So about 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 20, 30 instruments. Now, are you someone who can just sit down and teach yourself how to play anything or how does that work for you? I, I you know, it's kind of been, I guess, how it worked. I mean, I just, I taught myself yeah. almost every instrument other than violin when I was super young, when I was about four, I had some lessons, but I was like crazy quote unquote ADHD kid and just kind of rebelled and kind of quit when I was like seven. And then from then on, got obsessed with like listening to things like Michael Jackson and video games and sort of playing the songs myself by ear. So pretty much I've been self-taught my whole life on all of it, like music, like guitar, piano. I, I never had lessons in anything else other than some violin when I was super young. Hey, hey Deepak, this is Scott Simon. Well, that comes across. Oh, sorry, I'll let you, I'll let you jump in, Scott. Go Marvin, ahead. go right ahead. No, sir, go ahead. I was just going to say, it, it, you know, the fact that you play so many instruments um, really shows how creative you are and and I, i've listened to a few of your things and also um saw what you were doing on the loop station very sort of ed sheeran-esque you know what i mean with the overlapping i thought that was so so cool um just i i, I you've got this really kind of cyber pop feel about your music it's quite it's so, it's so flexible and it seems to pull from so many different places like what did you actually listen to when you were growing up um and by the way i, I really also want to ask you what performing at Bur burning man was like as well but <laughs> i'll ask you about your instrument inspirations first sure. yeah i mean growing up i listened to everything you know i, was, I grew up with different influences, family members, people, you know, so anything old, oh, there was old school music I was listening to. Michael Jackson was like one of my number one influences. Um, and then Outkast, I love like hip hop. I love um, electronic music. I, I went back and listened to a lot of old music like Beatles and, you know, also classical music. I really got into jazz. So I, I would say kind of everything, you know, really, 
you know, kind of all across the board um, in terms of influence. Uh, and then somehow I just got really into, I grew up also on a lot of sci-fi, like really with Isaac Asimov and Arthur Clarke, like 2001 Space Odyssey, that kind of stuff. Star Wars, I'm obsessed with Star Wars. Like in the other room, I have like Star Wars mantles everywhere. So I think that kind of contributes to the, the future thing you're talking about with the sound, like kind of a fantasy, like, I don't know, I call it an ancient future, like a mix of like the future with like electronic sounds, but then the ancient with the, like a 400 you know year old violin <laughs> and stuff like that. That blend of like ancient future, I feel like is, that's why it's robot nature, you know, it's future and ancient. If it, if it, if it's possible for a human to be someone's spirit animal, you are my spirit animal. <laughs> I, I, I love that, man. I love that. A mixture of like ancient and future and spiritual and connected and mind and body. And you mean you, and, and then Michael as the influence. That's why I love it so much. Right. Cause Michael was, was my dude. And you mix that all in the way you perform. I uh, more is, like a beauty queen. From a movie scene. Yeah, that's my ah, don't get, don't, don't, don't start, man. We, we, we'll, we'll be on here all, all next day. Time, next time. Next time, next time we're going to have you do some Michael. Ladies and gentlemen, that's my man, Deepak. Make sure you follow him over there on Instagram, the real Deepak. Make sure you follow him over there. Deepak, thanks for being here with us today. We absolutely stinking love you, my man. Ladies and gentlemen, I also want to introduce you, if you haven't met, my man, Mr. Alex again, uh, Alexander Gonzalez. Oh, Alexander Gonzalez, I got to say it a little bit faster, but I don't want to say it too fast. All right, Alexander is here with us today. He's going to bring us some social pop ins. Alexander, what's going on out there? Yo, know, say, hold on. I can't. I thought it was on my side. Alexander, we can't hear you. You know, what's powerful is the mute button. It's incredible how a little button can do so much. And so it's really a lesson in life. Uh, what button have you not pushed in life that you need to get you from point A to point B? But For me, it was the mute them. button. And <laughs> I love can it, you guys I love hear me now? Yes, we can hear you. Okay, awesome. On my picture, I don't know if it's just me, but I have like the little Windows thing, so I wasn't sure if it was like working. Guys, I'm amped up about today because first and foremost, the comments are coming in, which means you guys are understanding that if you write to us, we will be sharing this on camera, y'all, because we live and in charge. So I have a but first and foremost, I have to anytime I see a really nice comment about someone, I have to say it. And Debbie Morello said that Scott is such a caring individual. And that is so actually true. And what a wonderful compliment to give somebody. Because we know that Scott's goal is if you have that one phone number, that one call you have to make, that he's your guy. And I know this, that if I ever need bail, I'm calling you, Scott. <laughs> and so, because you're such a caring dude, so I'm here for it, dude. My one phone call, if I ever get arrested, in the name of Jesus, I rebuke that ever happening. Um, <laughs> also, Va Valerie Oakley, who has been on and watching, she is an active contributor. She's commenting all the time. And she really liked the quote that said, focus on the bigger picture. And I think that that's what we're doing here in 2022. We are taking the time to focus on the bigger picture and taking things even bigger into the next level. And I'm excited about that. Deepak, you got some love, brother. Everyone was saying how much they love Deepak. And Renee Noor actually stated that she really loved it when her community had you there singing you guys already know, Refugees of Love is already one of my top favorite songs. My kids and I jam to Deepak on Spotify, so you can find him there, Robot Nature, and literally listen to him and jam out with your kids and have the best time ever. But I have to say that today, I don't know what's going on with you guys, but your lighting is on fleek. I mean, Sarah, what's going on? Is this professional? You went to Mac to get your makeup, dude? Because y'all are looking fly this morning. The lighting is bomb. The necklaces are hung. And everyone is looking good. Lolita Green is your color. I'm seeing it. Marvin, you're looking f smart. Let me... Let me let me say it the way you know let me you're looking smart as usual and scott simons my brother love just emanates from every single fiber of your being and you're just one of the coolest dudes that ever walked the earth so that's what's happening across socials back to you glenn 
Actually, I'm gonna leave you right there in the in the hot seat. Uh, oh, sorry. Actually, I'm gonna leave you right there in the in the hot seat for just a minute, Alexander. You 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 pour all these wonderful compliments and bring all this energy, and we got to make sure that with you there in the center, that Marvin and Lolita and Scott and Sarah have an opportunity to either a pour into you or two pick on you, whichever they choose. <laughs> well, we are ready. Alexander, I am popping all the way in. Good morning. Good morning. You are looking pretty dapper and bringing everything to us from the street. Is that velvet? Lily, oh, it's ve velvet. Listen, I was rubbing the velvet yesterday and I was like, oh no, we saving the velvet for today, ladies and gentlemen. This is an on-camera velvet. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> I love it. Let me ask you this. Tell folks where you're pulling all of these comments from so they can get all the way in and be ready to um, come on in live. That is a great question. So I am primarily pulling from Facebook. That's where right now the Facebook Live gets the most comments. I do check over on LinkedIn Live. We're still getting our audience built over there. But honestly, my favorite place is when people utilize hashtag Rise and Grind on Twitter. And then I can go to one place yesterday, Chris. Christine Howard blew up the hashtag Rise and Grind uh, on Twitter, literally making it ours. She's taken over. So hopefully more people start doing the same. Yes. Yeah, I love I love that, man. And it's it's it is different, Alexander. It is new, right? We're streaming to all kinds of uh, of different places. And over on my side, um, you know, it's it's interesting as well because I used to have everybody kind of in one spot. Uh, but the good news is, you know, I do see like I see you were talking about Valerie Oakley. She says you're everywhere, Alexander. And I see Lady <laughs> Bird. I see Angie Lane over there. I see over on LinkedIn. G.I. is over on LinkedIn. Uh, so I can see, you know, Christina Howard's there. Uh, Burn, Linnell Burns, I see her over there, and Kimberly Williams, Gloria Bond, Tarika Simmons. So it's kind of cool, like, but it is it does it is different, right? We're trying to make sure, and hopefully, as we continue to uh, evolve this, you know, we'll streamline it for you because we want you to be able to reach us from where you are. We don't want to. We don't we don't want you to have to fall into our lanes. We want we want us to be present in your lanes. And that's what Alexander does an amazing job of is going out, making sure people feel seen, heard, significant and loved. He actually called me yesterday and he gave me he, he gave me a pep talk. He gave me a lecture. And he gave me a keynote all in the same like 10 all minutes. It was, a, it was a keynote lecture and, and pep talk. And um, most importantly, he ended it. He started and ended it with the love that uh, only Alexander can deliver. So I appreciate that, brother. Well, and I appreciate you, brother. You know, I, I'm a big believer that iron sharpens iron. And we'll never get to where we're going if we just blow smoke up each other's booties. Sometimes it's okay <laughs> to deposit and love on people so that you can make that withdrawal. I love on my team of incredible people that are across the globe so that when the time comes, if I need to, I can make the withdrawal. And not that I had to make a withdrawal yesterday with you, Glenn, because you give so much grace, but I had a message in my heart and thank you for being open and listening to that message. I love you just because, but I loved you a little bit more yesterday. Love you, my man. Thank you, Alexander, for joining us here today on Hashtag Rise and a Grind. And ladies and gentlemen, we are going to go ahead and uh, wrap up today's episode. Oh, my gosh. Oh my gosh, we're going to wrap it up oh here on God. Facebook and LinkedIn. We're going to head over to Clubhouse where you can engage with us. If you want to go jump in on the in, on uh, Clubhouse, the Breakfast with Champions room, we're going to hop over there and talk more about this networking and how do we make these connections and these relationships and how important it is uh, to make sure that you have a coach or a mentor, how important it is that you have those friends that won't blow smoke up your booty as Alexander just said, right? We want to, we're going we're gonna to head over there and talk about all of those things over on Clubhouse in the Breakfast with Champions room. But before we send off, does anybody got anything for anybody before we head over that way? I that just way? wanna thank that everyone way? for way. joining us this week. This was incredible. I've never done this before, right? I mean, I know you have Glenn Lundy, but <laughs> as someone who's never done this before, this has been an extraordinarily special week. I wanna thank each and every person who watched, who shared, who commented, who cared, who was a part of creating this experience this week. It was absolutely incredible. I shared on Facebook. 
my girls watched on Monday. They saw Mommy on TV. And that was so special and so exciting. And I'm grateful for all of you for being a part of this experience as we figure it out. It's super, super, super special. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Anybody else? Yeah, absolutely. I want to throw in my super thank you. I know Scott is coming right in behind me to everyone who is here. I appreciate just all the comments. I appreciate you sticking all the way in there. And guess what? The best is yet to come. My 90-year-old grandmother, my 70-year-old mother, my nine-year-old son are watching this right now on YouTube. And I just want to give a super shout out because guess what? We're standing right here. So thank you so much, Glenn. We're all in. That is so cool. 90 and a 70 and a nine-year-old multi-generation impact. Four generations. Thank you for sharing that. That's got me hyped right there. Glenn, I know when you started back in the closet, you know, (laughs) a thousand episodes ago, and now we all know how you feel starting something new. And it's exciting and it's fun. And we're surrounded by amazing people, but we're only going to get better and better and better and better. And I'm no honored doubt. to run with such great people. Thank you. No doubt, no doubt, no doubt. No, I've thoroughly enjoyed it, Glenn. And, and uh, to Scott's point, it's a real, real, um, uh, it, it gives a massive amount of insight to actually almost peek behind the curtain into Glenn's world. Uh, you, you've done a thousand shows already, do you know what I mean? So actually going through this experience and hanging with um, with the team has been incredible. And definitely a big shout out to, to Candice as well in the background, keeping us all on point. Um, I've thoroughly enjoyed it. Yes, yes, indeed. I agree a thousand percent. Well, thank you to each of you all. I'll go see you over here on Clubhouse in just a second. And of course, yes, Candace, we did it. We made it through the day. Boom, boom, boom. Deepak, shout out my man. Two songs today. Brandy Holloway, thanks for joining us. The good news with Ramon and of course, Alexander Gonzalez up in here bringing all the love. Ladies and gentlemen, that's today's episode of Hashtag Rise and Grind. Do me a huge favor if you haven't already make sure you share this sucker out tag a friend let them know that we're here come join us over on clubhouse i would greatly appreciate that as well and of course if you're following over on instagram which i only have one account by the way there's dozens of fake accounts and i will never go into your dms and ask you for money for bitcoin just so you know but if you're following us over on instagram make sure you hit that favorite button instagram's got a new feature we would love to be favorited up there at the top we've got our breakfast with champions page as well as our individual pages on top of that well with that said we'll see you over on clubhouse